our guest is seated this hour. Dr. Danvers Makori is here with us. And um, it's been a minute since you have been. How are you? I have. I am good right now. Okay. Yes, it has been a minute. I've taken a break from, I think, all media. Why? Oh, sometimes you just what is it much. about us that needs a break? Uh, it wasn't you guys, but it's not you particularly. It's <laughs> just... Uh, sometimes you make yourself scarce, uh. you, you, your value goes up. So you come at two pesos, dollars are scarce, so you, you go up. Uh, I like uh, that. It's, it's a strategy. For context, for context, <laughs> for context, for yeah. context uh, Dr. Danvers Makori is a commissioner at the National Cohesion and Integration Commission. Does that make it a little bit clearer as to why maybe you would be disappearing from us? Jeez. Uh, First of all, uh, do, do, uh, let me ask you, mm. you know, I thought you have your rubber shoes on today or sneakers. Mm. Because cause I thought you were going to protest. And hey, now they say we should finish show first. <laughs> finish show. They, said, they now say 12 o'clock. At, at least City has a helmet looking like fig. So tear gas might not be lobbied his way. <laughs> because but I, al- I, I also have the shoes you mentioned. <laughs> yeah, the shoes that at least you have. Mm. You, you should be ready. You've been touching everybody. Now you better be on the They said 12 o'clock. They said 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. But it's good to be here, folks. It's really good to be here. It's good to see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a day and Mm -hmm. it's the International Day for Countering Hate Speech. Mm -hmm. These are are still big issues. They were big issues when it came about as a factor. They're still big issues today. But before we get into the meat of it, City wants to welcome you properly. It wouldn't be Kenya's biggest conversation if he didn't with today's proverb. Yes. Our uh, prophets for the whole of this week come from the islands of the Republic of Mauritius. I say islands because, yes, we know Republic of Mauritius and you think it's one, one island. No, no, several islands. And for those who want to listen to us during this hour, let me repeat. The islands are Rodriguez, then Aguilega, then St. Brandon. These are the islands. Okay? It's an island country. It's in the Indian Ocean. Four hours flight from this country we call Kenya. It's not too far, just around the corner. Same length of time you take from here to Joburg, Oliver Tambo Airport. Same sort of time. The only thing is now this one you're flying over the sea. Right. The proverb. The cleverness of one alone is a shallow well that soon dries up. Come again. Mm-hmm. The cleverness of one alone is a shallow well that soon dries up. <laughs> that's a very that's actually a very precise proverb. Hmm. I agree with that. What does it mean? What how would you interpret it? I mean it's quite simple because you are as an individual, you're only you you're you're a finite being, let me put it that way. There's only so much you have and you can do. Uh therefore, no matter how wise and end up you have there's only so much you're limited mm-hmm. you're finite mm-hmm. but together uh, we 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 move the finiteness to an extent because we have a multiplier effect there's a synergy when we come together we can draw it on each other and we can multiply that over time therefore mm-hmm. as the african saying also goes uh, if you want to go far mm. go together so they are absolutely here yeah. mm. but as an individual you you're limited, you only know so much you can do. And then it speaks us to our Eastern culture of togetherness. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. the International Day for Countering Hate Speech, yeah. what's that? Well, it's a day that the UN, actually, this is a UN uh, date has been set, uh, in, in to focus especially on that specific issue because of the very existential danger hate speech presents to nation states and nations, um, especially based on what we've seen in the past. Uh, so the UN actually, which uh, a few times they get a few things right, decided to, to be going the preventive aspect of it because governments by, by nature are reactive. The UN is just a massive global government and, and they decided just to, for once to be preventive because they realized that in, in certain situations, especially on this specific issue, if you do not go on the preventive aspect of it, um, it is so hard to stop the snowball effect as things goes by. We've seen it from the Nazi days to the to Bosnia the other day. Uh, to one, it's, it's just that small. Once it starts snowballing, it's really hard to pull it back. So they realize, you know, it's good to have these. And they set up policies. They have an action plan against state speech. Mm. And guess what? We are the first country in the whole world to adopt um, a national 
plan against hate speech. Actually, mm-hmm. had the privilege to be at the UN. Yeah. Two years back, when we were developing, about three years back, we were developing the policy document. Um, and they really wanted us to spearhead this. Uh, so the first, actually, celebration was about that time, three years back. And, and I was there uh, with an, an Ambassador Kimani, the then Ambassador Kimani, who was a permanent rep at the UN, I had a floor to give the speech. Because what the first country to adopt is to, to have this framework against his speech. And secondly, in the a, in a scheme of things, we are the first nation now, the only two countries in the world, Pakistan and second, to have an actual law that speaks to the specific issue of hate speech. Is it broad? Not really. Is it effective? Not as much as we'd want to. But I think the UN realized we are in the, when we, we are in the vanguard uh, of, of, of this issue of hate speech. So they said, you know what, why don't you adopt this? And when we have dotted it, and um, it's still in the early stages of implementation, but that's the general gist of, of, of what it is. Mm. Okay, mm. I mean, we, it, I think we've seen mm. some of the effects mm. of, spe- of hate speech around the world. Um, here on the continent, we've seen it in different parts of the world, but let's just go back a little bit, um, uh, and say, what then w- would characterize hate speech? What are we hearing or seeing that we can then now say this is hate speech or what I've heard is actually then hate speech? Now, I think that's a very good question and that's the actually million dollar question when it comes to hate speech. Um, the reason why countries have not been able to adopt a specific legal measure or law or a bill is because of the half word of that complex word hate speech, the speech part. Because speech is protected to an extent, mm-hmm. and it's something we call free speech in this modern day world, especially coming from see what Americans are doing mm-hmm. uh, with free speech and in, in every in actually mentioning it, um, there isn't an actual definition because it's very broad. But we know now in, in our act is is is, is actually very specific I did on ethnic content. You have to have. In law, which is very hard to prove, what we call mens rea, the motive. Yeah. Okay, mens rea to motive, the intention of inciting uh, ethnic uh, hatred against somebody. So and that's the biggest thing to prove, and that's really even we have a challenge when it comes to even prosecuting mm-hmm. uh, legal cases or for that matter, mens rea. But now it's measured on the effect. Okay, if you if if today city says something. Um, it can be misconstrued, it can be judged to go there either. But now, if the effect it is uh, that you can see it has effect on the ground, and it is after the effect, that's a, that's a challenge you have. That's the reality that we have, even in, 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 in our law. That's the case. Okay, now, city said this, but this is what it caused. The, you know, certain groups, certain people uh, reacted this way, and during Saturday, they caused harm or conflict to other groups be- because of what city said. Yeah. Now, in, 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 in the U.S., they've been a little bit more successful because they have actually a, something called hate crime, mm-hmm. okay? Because they go a step further. It's not what you say, but it's what you do. Uh, there are certain crimes that are against people that is, made because of their history, it's re- along racial lines. Like, like there's a mass shooting in Boston uh, a few years ago, and, and one, of, one of the things that was prosecuted and it was a felony was specific hate crime because... The perpetrator actually mentioned it. They said, mm-hmm. you know what, he's targeting a specific race. And as he shooted, as, as he was shooting in the supermarket, he called people, you know, racial effy traps because that was his intention. Mm. Yeah. So men's rear was able to prove because of the actor's rear. You could see, yes, he did something, but you could see the intention. Now, that's the challenge we have when it comes now to, to hate speech, proving the intention, especially now when it comes to um, uh, what do you call uh, this, this is a specific word we, we, we use? Um, coded language. Mm. Yeah, because I can, especially in our country, we, uh, and, and we saw it very effectively in Rwanda, and we say, we can say in our country, uh, you know, I can say, well, I was just referring to actual weeds. So what, you, what if you take me to court, I'll say, well, I was just talking yeah, about weeds. weeds yeah. So you, you have really no case against because I'm talking about weeds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Use the word madua doa. Oh, madua doa. Say, I was speaking about yeah. polka dots. Well, yeah, so mm-hmm. you, you really can. So especially it goes to, to, to that realm of, of coded language. It is challenging. That's why we actually are amending our act to include coded language because it's really not. If you take somebody code and they use coded language, then what 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 case do you really have against? But let me ask the question: Even if someone uses coded language, for it to actually be effective, it must be widely known and understood. True. Okay. But organizations such as NCIC have the advantage of history. True. And the advantage of 
other countries who also have a history. So you don't actually need to wait for some harm to be perpetrated because you know what words in the past have led to. It's in understanding that this is the possibility, not necessarily. So we enter the realm of probable cause. Yep. It, it's not a certainty, mm. but, but, but it's probable. Mm. Now, once you enter that realm, you then have a leeway to take something preventative. True. True. Yes, you can intervene. Wasn't it difficult at the first onset? Mm -hmm. Because, so it's a two-part question, Danvers. First of all, that we have seen that there has been action of a criminal nature yeah. that has been taken as a result of what somebody said. True. Spurring you on or putting an idea in your head and then because of that, it grew into something. It became an action that we then saw people arrested for. Again, you've given the example of Rwanda, which yeah. is a very good example. Yeah. Um. But unfortunately, in order for us to have laws that curb this thing, it needed to have happened first, is it mm -hmm. not? Be very true. Yeah. It had to have happened for you true. to then now look at it and say, "All right, right this is something that we can't have yeah. because this is what it leads to." Okay. Are we saying that is the only realm within which we can then characterize hate speech, or are we saying that when we look at them a little bit closer, we are actually saying? Don't even say things of this nature because the likelihood of there being a uh, requisite action then is greater by virtue of you having said it. Now, let me, because let me dovetail both what you said mm. um, in this manner. First of all, it's very true. Even in our specific instance as a country, the reason CAC actually exists is because of what happened in 2007-2008. There mm. was an actual um ethnic violence against communities we went to a brink of civil war mm -hmm. because of what was said okay because of politicians inciting and pushing a certain narrative so true to your to your point mm -hmm. ncc was created and the law actually to prevent that from happening was created yeah. fact second the reality was the people who created that law, the lawmakers, at that time and in subsequent years, so happened to be the biggest perpetrators and actors in this realm of incitement. Mm. Okay? So if I am a politician, an elected member of parliament for that matter, and I know um, the, re the realm of the place I operated, therefore I'll make sure as I create that law, I am shielded to an extent okay i'll create a weak law so that by the time you really get to me it's gonna be difficult mm. that was very intentional because at, the, at that time the biggest perpetrators of that now to what city has said now to bring them together the preventive aspect of it you see here's the reality mm. in, in as much there was as they are very myopic and self-serving when they created that law trying to pre protect themselves because they're not the biggest actors what they failed to understand and they failed in human wisdom. Now back to the actual problem that you gave us today. Limited scope of thinking of an individual mm. is this: that they didn't did not. But in 07, there was no Twitter. No. The, okay, X. Now there was no Facebook. Mm. There was no uh, TikTok. There was no Instagram. None of them existed. Think about that. Actually, that is very sobering. Let's mm. put every perspective. They didn't foresee the nature of reality we operate in, in, in today. Now, with the dawn of social media, yeah. it has amplified and accelerated, and especially comes to disinformation, misinformation, the reality of this hate speech and incitement. Now, it's no longer them who are doing it. They are the victims of it now, online. Yeah? The tables have turned because they wanted... They were the actors then because they are the microphone and the platforms and then traditional campaigns when you go to a place and you, you uh, a platform and you say certain things. Yeah. Now the tables have turned. The masses are armed. You don't need to be on <laughs> TV or radio to say something. No. They have. So they, they now they realize, you know, yeah, maybe we should have done something. And we saw during the last election, we had a peaceful election. Then the week after the election itself, uh, because of the, there was that lull as we waited for IBC to announce the results, everybody had it was an authority in what the score was, and and and, and they said they have won. This side said they have won, 
and and then this is the challenge we had and this is a true story because we i had we had to uh, we i personally had to engage both sides so I mean, you guys are, are are going too much you you, you can't say you've won and then we know that the scores are not determined yet yeah. now here's a reality uh to the preventive aspect this is important we had a discussion with all social media companies where i was going okay to the prevention aspect uh x that time twitter google um tiktok was very new and and facebook and we said uh meta and say listen guys you uh, we don't want to be adversarial as a government entity let's be partners uh because they have content moderators they have measures to they have within even the rules of regulations within those spaces of what you say what can't you say so just enforce your own rules they have regulatory mechanisms yes, within within there yeah. just mm. enforce your rules and they agreed for the most part apart from facebook to do that <laughs> and and we are an issue and right now actually it's a big case on facebook concerning that issue because in, and they have been sued what happened in ethiopia and we are partly joined with them because of their platform that actually has been used and proven uh, to cause death and harm to people mm. um because certain groups certain hate within ca- in our country one of the reasons actually i was in the u.n on this specific issue was because at that time if you remember city you guys had me here uh and 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 and, and do you had me here a while back three years ago and must was the brink of yep. civil war yeah yes. and, and i said the only place in our country where we we're close to genocide was Mercibet. We were this close to just because if you look at the social media aspect in, in in that county at that time, mm-hmm. especially Facebook, the, the the hatred and the vitriol that was there mm. was 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 amazing. And we used that to go to, to social media companies and say, okay guys, this is what happened. We cannot have, uh, uh, allow it to go a full scale. This is a specific region in our country and we had evidence, we had groups that needed to be pulled down. They refused to pull down this group. Mm. So we say let's partner. If we have an issue with with do saying something, we'll bring do posts on X and say you know what, Absolutely. what do is saying is dangerous to our country. So just pull it down for now and then we can discuss other issues later. And, and X at that time was very successful. So to your point and what you said, that's what that's what things that, that that we've done. Revisiting some of these issues and I think are vital uh, when it comes to things that could happen and i guess that's the difficulty as you had intimated uh, previously danvers that so how do you prove it and the dangers that lurk there and i think here uh, it seems that every time there is an election or running up to an election or you know when everybody just really fancies they can stand up somewhere and say whatever they like but like you said, reason has been given. And many would ask then, have we actually seen that this particular action or this particular thing that somebody has said, which would be characterized as hate speech, if it does not yield any kind of action that would be thought to be criminal, right? Can you then go again, go for that person? Can somebody say something and then give the reason and say, well, look, psh, I said it, but nothing happened. So why you why why would you be coming for me? Um, uh, thanks, Nick. Let me give a real example, and I'll put it in co- in context so it doesn't look like I'm targeting spec- an, an individual because it's a real story. It's in it's in the public domain, so I can quote it. Okay. So in the big scheme of things during our election period last year, um, compared to other times in our country, we had the least amount of, I would say incitement coming from politicians directly themselves okay we would have close to 100 rallies a day and we were moni- we were monitoring about 18 radio stations um and tv stations across the country really the, the main ones um we we're monitoring uh, life as as it was happening so it was quite a difficult thing to do but we did it so th- i'm putting this perspective before i give you this example mm-hmm. Um, so we have 100 rallies approximately a day from Turkana to 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 uh, to Lamu, mm-hmm. okay, across the country, and ac- for a PA, two-year period of campaigning, there was minimal incident by actual politicians. Now, what they did was they had proxies; mm-hmm. they gave their the surrogates and bloggers to you know to say all these crazy things, but they did not say it. Now. At one time, now um, that's why I'm giving this story. Yeah. One horrible mythical Linturi said a word or a phrase in Eldoret. <laughs> and that's everybody had took issue uh, mm-hmm. to given the context of our country, which was the word Madoa Doa. Mm. Okay. And we, of course, took action. He was arrested. He was the only politician arrested at that period of time. 
Um, and when we arrested him and started processing him, uh, actually, the DC actually s- s- took <laughs> action further than, quicker than we wanted because sometimes you need. So there's a legal process before you arrest somebody. Just these days, this is because you just arrest people any day you want. Yeah. And hold them, the however you want, you want. We have constitutional protections to your rights. So there's a process which they kind of skip so there's no time. But anyway, long story short, when he was arrested and prosecuted and taken to court, long story short, his case actually was dismissed. Okay. On what uh, grounds? On, and that's that's important. Actually, he's, he's kind of dismissed by, by by the courts because of the issue of evidence and the preponderance of evidence and just proving what he said actually meant harm or them. Now we use, of course, the same thing in history, majority, especially in in where he was in Western Australia, it was had a very negative history or connotation as a, as our country. Okay, now. Here, here is here is the reality now on the flip side because we know the challenge we have on our law. We've been we were very keen on the preventive aspect, engaging them directly, and that's why there was really minimum um, incitement by them. And we had the potential now of we, we what we did actually we 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 went to the Chief Justice mm-hmm. and had very frank discussions with her. We said here, here's the problem we have with the power politicians. They know for a fact that if you arrest him today. Mm-hmm. And this is reality. Titi, by the time you prosecute and a case is, is had an internment in Kenya, the average time is five years. So they know for a fact, if I inside today and it's election period, by the time my case is had in time, it's five years from now, it's the next election and you are actually, we, we are like goldfish, we forget within two seconds. So yeah. forget about five years, you forget exactly what this guy said. And we've moved on. So we realize, you know, it doesn't work. So let's, 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 remove that aspect of delayed justice and we established six courts specifically on issue of hate speech and election violence only six mm-hmm. uh, across, across the country Bombasa, nairobi uh, kisumu uh, eldoret nakuru and kakamega and 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 we made it very we, we, we say that so the northeastern part of Kenya doesn't have one such court. <laughs> no, it was not represented. At that time. We, we were targeting uh, it, most perpetrators in the region where they, they, they could. But you know, it's a high it's, it's it's a high court. So if you do something in Garissa, you can be presented anywhere in the country okay. by law. Yeah, so we can arrest you in in Garissa and take you to Kisubu because the high court has jurisdiction across the country. But anyway, what what it did was we had agreed with the chief justice that that you have we we can hear and determine a case within weeks. And we made it very clear to the politicians because we engaged both can, both campaigns that that and we were on, on TV on media and everywhere say listen now we've changed the playing field now if you do this if you incite if you say something if you um, are caught with hate hate speech you have actually a few days and you'll be arrested and prosecuted within a few maybe weeks and your case is hardly determined and that can guess what it had the preventive aspect because now they knew for a fact we don't have five years you have uh, two months at the most and you're actually going to be prosecuted and actually did did help to answer mm-hmm. your question okay yeah. you know it's interesting about people who understand the law and then choose the understanding of the law to help them subvert it mm-hmm. <laughs> it's actually very interesting because that in many ways is a very clear definition of impunity very true it means this is not a person who actually cares about the law the law is a tool and they know how to manipulate it but then again comes the issue of the rights that our constitution gives individuals. Mm. Do you find sometimes that because of these rights, the processes that we need to take in order to set right things which have actually gone wrong or seem to be going wrong, that sometimes they act as a hindrance towards, uh, or people bringing in the issue of the rights acts as a hindrance towards bringing certain people to justice? Uh, To be very frank with you, given, I'm going to answer this from a legal perspective. And a human rights perspective too. Here's the reality. Um, no, you see, there is our constitution, and given the history of our country, CT, we needed that constitution yeah. because we know the abuse of power that we witnessed. Mm. Secondly, I don't think the, we've, the human we've evolved as a country to an extent, but the human nature has not evolved. Why? And progressive. So the state still has the potential to abuse power, to oppress, suppress, to persecute you if they want to. So there they have to be certain mechanisms and measures to prevent state abuse. Remember, remember, 
if you're arrested today, to answer your question, it is the state that will arrest you. Yes. Okay. Different arms of government, but they're all still state, <laughs> state, state, state organs. Yeah. Okay. It's the police, the, 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 the public prosecutor who will prosecute you. And it's the judge who will hear your case, who belongs, who's a state officer. I mean, what, who do you have to, to protect against all these state potential excesses? Mm. Because they can conspire. Now, they're supposed to be independent of each other. But we've seen many times that they can actually conspire against you. And you as an individual, what, what, what protects you? Who protects you? It's the Constitution. And that is why we, we enacted it. So I, w- I, will not, I will not say it, 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 it is to be, um, the Constitution is a problem. No, no, actually, we've not even known implemented institutions. What we've had is we've not, we've had, we, we, if, you, if you talk to experts, especially I've sat with experts who drafted the Constitutions, they are saddened that we've not even implemented or enacted three quarters of the constitutions because we have certain bills which should have come into mm. play now so that now there is a, a balance, so to speak. So we have all these ex- excesses in terms of what we see as, as right, but we never had, like, for example, our, our bill actually has never, has, is, is the, the, there are times that our bill has been questioned whether it's constitutional or not. Yeah, yeah. So we've never, we've never seen, we've, we still have, a cake law today. If you go to protest uh, and do this, still the Public Order Act, which mm. is unconstitutional, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this thing was d- done during the colonial times. Yeah, and and the police still use it to suppress and oppress people. It, it, it is wrong. So, so for me, I would say we have laws should be enacted, specific laws, so that now there's there is uh, actual impediment, the, the deterrence to those who are, have impunity. Because why, why they have impunity is because they know for a fact there's, there's a, a lacuna, so to speak. There's gaps between what the Constitution says and the bills that are actually ought to help now enforce certain laws. So then the enforcement part is what is lacking. We just need to more laws to, to make sure that that is enforced and, and implemented. Why do you think there's non-implementation of some of these factors that are so clearly important? Why, why do you think? I mean, it could be that they are ignored or it could be that there is deliberate inaction because we know what it means if they were. Why do you think that these have not been? Because this is the second conversation we've had this morning yes. where we are complaining mm. about laws within the constitution mm. that have not been implemented. So there's a problem. Why is it not happening? Uh, to be very honest with you, and, and this is the biggest conversation in the country, as you say, unfortunately, those, let me actually be more precise, lawmakers, MPs have one, one of the key issues they ought to do is Legislation, mm-hmm. an elected member of parliament is legislation. So you want to tell me, as an elected member of parliament, to enact laws that will restrict me, that will affect me negatively, so to speak. It will benefit millions of Kenyans, but on, on the other flip side, it affects me negatively. Absolutely no, because we are we are selfish, we are myopic, we are self-centered, we are narcissistic. There's absolutely no way I am going to implement these laws because they will adversely affect me, although they will benefit the country. So it is me first, not the country first. So to put it point blankly, we have leaders who put self-interest first instead of the country first. Pure and simple. You know, we, we had uh, one Mr. Charles Nichai sitting on the seat you're sitting on, and we wanted to him to talk to us about the commission mm-hmm. that he headed. Mm-hmm. when devolution became a reality. Yep. And one of the questions we asked him was, do you think those years were enough? And he said, yes, he thought they were enough. Yep. I think I disagree with him. Mm-hmm. Because that was the commission that would have ensured that these gaps we're talking about yep. are actually put in place. Very true. Because when we left all these matters to the vagaries that parliament is, yep. Well, here we are, aren't we? Yes. Mm. Very true. I agree with you. I was with him actually in Ivasha in a conference with all the independent commissions and, and, and offices. And they all had the same problem. And, and he was a panelist. And he had time to speak, but there was a challenge, exactly what you said. And there was a rush to, to do this thing. We, th- the Constitution is, for lack of a better word, I just want to put it in perspective. Was it really a rush? Was it really a rush? Because it, uh-huh. for, it, with hindsight now, yeah. mm-hmm. this was deliberate. Yes, true. It was. Because it's like someone saw. To understand it, you only need to look at 
some certain aspects of our commission yeah. that really empowered the citizenry yep. and sought to give the citizenry the power, power. that the constitution yep. actually sought to give them, which got watered down really, 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 really quickly. Yep. Like, for instance, just our ability to recall members of parliament. Mm. Now, imagine the very people whom we can recall are given the power to determine whether that law it can act. Uh, now you tell me, how is that going to work out? I won't. Of course it won't. That's exactly what I said. So I think it's bad, but here's, here's, here's a caveat to it. And I don't think maybe we can learn very quickly. At the end of the day, there's a, there's a bottom line in the sense of a democracy. Okay? And we, we the people, we the people, actually determine the leaders that go to parliament. That's a reality too. Mm. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay? So as much as we have a deficit of leadership, but in a democracy like we have in our country, they're reflective of who, who we are as a people, Kenyans too. But Dr. Ari, yes. this deficit, we speak of it loudly, we speak of it in the, in the, in the, in the previous hour, yeah. but is it that we make bad choices or is that the accountability measures or the accountability tools that we have are inadequate because what is it that makes a good leader? Is it someone who does not need supervision and oversight? Everybody needs supervision and oversight. True. Or is it our unwillingness? Because I don't think we're unwilling to oversight. But so the question is, what stops us? Because in the absence of that, that's when leaders get to now entrench this impunity we're speaking of. They just do exactly what they think they, they want to do or feel like they should do. I have a th question mm. now to that, and we can think about it. And you help me now on this. You help me. Can good people, generally speaking, elect bad leaders? And can bad people elect good leaders? The, the answer to both questions is yes. But I'll put a caveat to it. Nothing like good leaders and nothing like bad people or bad leaders. No, no. Many people who get elected, get mm. elected because there's a certain track record they have. Uh -huh. If not... Their party has traction and can get them elected. But mm -hmm. there are people, and they're not few, mm -hmm. who are elected because what they say they want to do, people have seen them do. do. Then they get sworn in. And then this monumental change takes place and you start wondering, what, what, what happened to these people? Mm -hmm. It's a question we keep asking. Okay, But the answer is not really complicated. Mm -hmm. In the absence of daily oversight from the people who actually put you in, in office, it is very, very easy to take your own path and do whatever you wish because, and you think, five years is it, a very is long, long time. time. Exactly. Yeah. But the very politicians we speak of has ensured that five years isn't such a long time because if they start campaigning now, now. It's, there's something they've understood. Okay? Now, they seem to understand what they want a lot clearer mm -hmm. than what we do. So, to answer your question, there is nothing like good citizens or bad leaders because <laughs> these leaders come from this same community yep. yes and within those same communities we have an abundance of people we call good and who mean well and among the people they usually elect are people who they think are actually good people mm. yes so then maybe are we not looking at an issue then whereby what we hold sacred or what we hold sacrosanct then comes into question mm -hmm. because if i hold systemic values in terms of no matter what, this thing that I'm supposed to do will be done. One, two, three, four. Doesn't matter. Come rain, come sunshine. I will do what I'm supposed to do. I will not do what I'm not supposed to do. If we did, then it wouldn't matter what position you find yourself in. You will actually get it done. Mm -hmm. That if you do hold certain values up here on the integrity rung, mm -hmm. that you will do your job. And so I think it is on that backdrop that other jurisdictions were able to look at them in awe and say, how is it that volunteers are the ones who run an election, for example? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a body, an electoral body. It's volunteers who understand that, well, you know what, guys, this is what we hold up here. And so we'll do it because that is what is expected of us. Could it be a value issue? Because that would answer why. Somebody who you, and I, that, I hate that word, good, somebody who you see is good, finds themselves in a position of leadership and then somehow they become bad. So were they bad all along or did the situation change? Look at it this way. As they say in Kenya, 
kwa ground vitu ni mm. different look at it this way and, and let's be very practical mm-hmm. and, and, and and just listen to me for for a minute go outside your studio right now mm. and just stand outside your gate and just observe 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 how traffic moves mm. observe the border border guy go down the road here at this junction gm mm. just observe observe the vendors of the pedestrians of the human beings there is a crossing over there but you see people walking on the highway yeah mm. right mm-hmm. you will see vendors throwing trash right across the street you will buy a a, co- a piece of coal or sugarcane and spew everything down there mm-hmm. you see border borders going the opposite way you see motorists reversing with an order to reverse you see all manner of things across the board whether they that's why i said everybody the, the rich the poor the middle class it doesn't really matter just observe generally just observe human behavior just be quiet mm. and 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 this is something peculiar we've seen in this nation there's i i believe uh, and, and and this will get in trouble but i'm gonna be really uh, truthful <laughs> here i'm gonna uh, get in trouble okay <laughs> get in we, trouble by all means please we as a nation to your point in terms of values mm. our psyche as a nation our psyche as a nation to what you used city the impunity level i don't think we are there to the rule of law i think intrinsically in our intrinsic nature is that of lawlessness and impunity and chaos and we love it so <laughs> so now i'm speaking this way mm-hmm. so now you bring a leader and here i am if i run a coffee say i will bring order and i will make sure there's no this and that they will follow the rule of law uh. i promise you i will not get elected mm-hmm. let me put it this way is it because people don't want no, law is, and order no. or is it because they don't believe you no, no you, you, you know why let me tell you why and, and and allow me to cite the scripture here this is the first in judges that says in those days mm. in judges there was no kings and everybody did what was right in their own eyes yeah you see everybody did what was right in their own eyes so if it is right for me to steal from you i'll steal from you because it's right for me i I don't care i need it yeah if if i want to run you over ct because you're on my way and i'm running late get over my i'll run you over because it is right for me to do that Mm. have you ever heard of the broken window theory yes yes let me read the aspect of it to you yes the broken window theory states that visible signs of disorder and misbehavior in an environment encourages further disorder and misbehavior leading to serious crimes. Absolutely. No, that is true. Okay, now, you see, what does human nature naturally gravitate towards, good or bad? Bad. Not bad. bad. I'll say bad. I say bad. Intrinsically, that... we're not good. <laughs> yes. If nobody's there to make sure you're doing the right <laughs> thing, you're going to yes. do the wrong thing. That's why we have laws. Yeah. Yes. And that's why we have policemen. Yes. yes. So then now, when you have policemen who are supposed to do good doing bad, yes. what then do you have? The law of More the jungle. Bad. Worse. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> the fact that we're having this discussion negates your statement. And why it negates your statement? It means we actually do understand things which are right and wrong. We do understand. Yes. But there's a word. Whatever is convenient. Now, when convenience takes hold then whatever it is that will give you the least resistance or cause you the least pain, You'll that's what you will gravitate it. towards it. Because yes. standing upright would probably mean swimming against a tide. And that is something that most of us are not willing to do. Mm-hmm. And the only time, do ask this question. And she's been, I was telling her this morning. She's been asking it for three years. At what point will the bow break? At what point will people realize, you know something, I'm actually causing myself harm with this. Mm. And we said during the break that we have Uru's government and this government to thank for one thing. They have brought the citizenry to a precipice. Mm. Yes, we, I am grateful to them because the way they've gone about their business, mm-hmm. they are making citizens realize they're being ruled badly. Mm-hmm. Their interest is not being taken care of in the way it was promised or in the way that it can be. So, Danvers. Yeah. So, what are then 
steps towards and i mean i think i don't think we can tire mm. from putting them out there you know our, our minutes are running down but what are steps that can be taken even as we remember this day and commemorate it we're, we're into what i'm going to call political silly season already yeah um and things are happening here things are happening in different parts of the continent things are happening in different parts of the world but here where it's localized mm. what are steps where we ought to be or things we ought to be looking out for snuff them out where needed very simple let me use this analogy because mm. of time mm. um if you're in a dark alley with a road or a, a roadway that is dark why we light them is because l light chases away darkness and exposes everything there's there is a, a, a less chance of a criminal activity taking place you're mugged in a very dark alley or roads and so we light up streets okay it's generally for safety what we are doing today is exactly that we are bringing light you understand mm -hmm. we're bringing light to the issue we are we we are chasing darkness because darkness is lack of knowledge so light light is is used as a metaphor for knowledge when you bring this when we're discussing about it we're talking about it because we can sweep it on the rug and assume everything is fine yeah but then we give um space and time for those who perpetrate of evil uh to do that but when you do this, there's a deterrence aspect we are, we, are, we are creating. We're talking about it. The citizens are getting empowered. Those who, somebody who's about to say something bad today or a political leader will rethink it because they have listened, they know. In the action plan, this is an actual plan, actually. We have an action plan. It's very simple. It's bringing all the actors, including you. Media is ex extremely critical mm. in this aspect. So there's law enforcement, there's, there's the civil society. All these actors have to come together so that we are the light in the early darkness of hate speech. But go. once you do that, then we can save a nation and be preventive on that issue. No greater words to end on, I think. Uh, Dr. Danvers Macquarie, thank you for being here this morning, a commissioner with the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, and we've been having that conversation on countering hate speech, International Day for the Countering of Hate Speech, but then looking at other issues that are pertinent to discussions we're having even today, when co which concerns the finance bill. I have to say one thing, be safe, folks, no matter what it is that happens today from 12. Let's see what happens as we go through the day. Thank you for being part of Kenya's biggest conversation today. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day.